Hey, what's up, man? I'm just working on this receptacle here. When I moved it, it was flickering a little bit, so um, I'm gonna check power at the screws. You know what type of PPE I would need to protect from electric shock for this scenario? It's one of the things I'm gonna get into today, but before I do that, I'm just gonna check power real quick, so hang on. Discovery, go at throttle up. What up, Sparky? It's your boy Evan here in Phoenix, Arizona, and it is hot. We're gonna do a little safety topic today called Restricted Approach Boundary. Now, hopefully you've seen my previous video called Limited Approach Boundary. If not, go check that one out. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna get into it, if you're ready. Are you ready? Remember, this is not your electrical safety program, but you're gonna learn a lot. So these videos aren't intended to train you, but they are intended to give you more information or maybe spark your learning so that you can be safe and you can teach others around you. So for the purposes of Sparky EDU, we're just gonna make this very surface level. We're just gonna stick to the table and move on. If you want to dive deeper with me, go to my page at What Up Sparky, and I'll share a little bit more information with you. So let's get into it. Now, before we actually start talking about this, I want to make it clear that anytime you're talking about restricted approach or limited approach, we're talking about energized work. And just to be able to do energized work, there are prerequisites that need to be met before you do that. For the sake of this video, we have to assume that all of that has been met and that you are able to and you should be uh, doing this type of work. So that's really the context that we have here. So here's the AC table. Go to row less than 50 volts and over to restricted approach boundary and you'll see it's not specified. It's interesting to me because it doesn't say not required, it says not specified. We'll dive into that a little bit more over on What Up Sparky, but for right now, it's not specified. If you go from 50 to 150 volts, it says avoid contact. Now, when you hear boundary and then you hear avoid contact, that can be confusing. So if you think about a restricted approach boundary as uh, an invisible line that if you cross it, once you cross it, you are becoming energized. Your hand would be energized, the tool would be energized. At that point, it would make sense that you would have protection on, you'd have a glove on, and then it wouldn't be energized. So just imagine the restricted approach boundary as when you break it, that is the same as being energized. And if you look at it like that, when we talk about the screws on a plug like this, that makes more sense. So I don't need any protection to get my hand right near it, but if I was gonna touch it, duh, you know, you need to have some electric shock protection. But the cool thing is, is whether it's a plug in a house like this, or let's say you have a flow meter or telemetry devices or anything that you know is just 120 and you're permitted to uh, test that thing or work on it energized, technically if you can avoid contact, you don't need uh, electric shock protection. That's kind of pretty cool if you're qualified. Um, if you can do the work with electric shock protection or some insulated gloves, so do it. Just do it anyway. You're bettering your odds that way, right? Um, my recommendation would be that if something could move or if you could inadvertently fall into it, even a situation like this, I might lose my balance, um, wear gloves anyway. And that's pretty much it for that. So let's take a look at a residential panel. That's pretty common. Okay, stop, stop. Let's take a look at the table again. Now, if you look at 151 to 750 volts and go back over to the restricted column, you'll see it says one foot. So that means that if any part of your body gets within 
one foot of an exposed live part, it needs electric shock protection. So you would have to wear a glove in this circumstance and you couldn't get your hands closer than that. What that means is that in a residential panel, if you have that dead front off and you need to test in there, you gotta have your gloves on. And if you have your gloves on, then you're perfectly fine. Again, this assumes that you're permitted to be doing this work in the first place. But um, this is a situation that I see a lot of people uh, not practicing this, and it is very good practice. Um, again, we're not talking about arc flash either, but you would get arc flash protection from these gloves with the leather protectors on them. So that's just something to note. Now, the same restricted approach boundary is going to apply in commercial and industrial situations from 151 to 750 volts. So even though it seems different from a residential panel, we're just talking about electric shock again, not arc flash. So the, uh, the shock factor is the same, if you will. Um, that's it for restricted approach boundary. I hope you've learned something. I want to challenge you to see what your company's best practices are and maybe you can do even better than the table. Be safe out there. Thanks for watching. Discovery, go at throttle up.